Is Ravi Zacharias in heaven? John MacArthur, Abner Chow, and Justin Peters all question whether he's with the Lord now or whether he's not. Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you today. I've got uh, two clips, one from uh, Dr. MacArthur and Dr. Chow, who are speaking about whether uh, Dr. Uh, Zacharias is with the Lord now, whether he was born again. And the second one from Justin Peters, where he's talking about the same issue. And I think you'll find these helpful. And as we look at these, I'd like you to try to figure out why they're saying they have doubts about his salvation. What is it that leads them to believe that he may well not be with the Lord now? Mr. Producer, if you would, please play clip number one. Can I ask you a question, Ebner? Right now, all over the media, everywhere across the world, is the story of Ravi Zacharias. And you all probably have seen that, a Christian apologist for decades and decades. Uh, and all of a sudden, it's discovered toward the end of his life that he's having all these sexual liaisons, and it turns out that it's, it's gone on for years and years and years. And the question keeps coming up, can a Christian behave like that? Um, is that... Is that possible at that level, at that depth, uh, on that sort of long-range kind of experience? Or are, do we have a right to question the, the, the salvation of someone like that? When we see these problems of somebody not attending church and not being part of the fellowship because they're in a, some kind of grander ministry, we should raise a red flag because there is nothing in Scripture that says you have to preach across the country. There is everything in scripture that says you need to be in church mm -hmm. when they meet. So there is no world or universe in the Bible where it says certain people get an exception mm -hmm. to obeying the Bible. Mm -hmm. There is no category for that. And therefore, these are serious issues and they should have been raised. And if they were raised and the church was the church, we could avoid this and maybe even help somebody repent that might have been a Christian. Just to, to add to the, that, that answer, in order to live that way, when you're a high-profile preacher, you have to be sinning in multiple categories to cover that. Yeah. You've got to be lying about where you were, what you did, who you talked to. You've got to fabricate lies at a complex level with all the people who are around you, with all the people you're, you're going to someplace, and you've got to You've got to hide your life from them. You, you've got to lie about the past and where you were, who you talked to. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> Secure that. Yeah. What, what you did. In other words, the machinations around that sin are massive. Mm -hmm. And that kind of fabrication, living at that level of creating a false life, certainly comes into the category of, of 1 John. Yes. So, you know, that's why the questions have come up, is, is Ravi in hell? Doctors MacArthur and Chow raised some great points, and uh, they're valid concerns. Concerns about immorality, concerns about lying and deception, concerns about traveling all the time and not having a local church and having no accountability. All of those are very important. However, they're not focusing on the right issue. The issue is not his behavior. The issue is his belief. Did he believe the promise of John 3.16, that whoever believes in Jesus will never perish, but has everlasting life? If he did, then he's with the Lord now, regardless of the quality or lack thereof of his life. On the other hand, even if he was a very moral person, if he did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation, then he's not with the Lord. Those points that they're bringing up are important for sanctification, for church discipline, but they're not the key question in terms of whether a person is born again. Let's take a look at a clip from uh, Justin Peters. If you would, Mr. Producer, play clip number two. 
you know, it was no surprise when we learned what we learned about Carl Lentz and uh, Tully and Chavijan that, you know, that, that came as no surprise. But the same kind of sins were going on with Ravi Zacharias and maybe even on a far greater scale, apparently, who knows. But yeah. um, same sins were going on with Ravi Zacharias, and yet Ravi Zacharias was this, you know, he was always in a suit and tie or, you know, he didn't he didn't have that look that Carl Lentz and Tully and Javidjan did, but it's the same sin. Two things that I noticed, um, he rarely ever dealt with a text. Mm-hmm. It was true. more philosophy. Um, That's true. Logic. Uh, he was very ecumenical. I, and I, I picked up on that. And I, I actually wondered a lot, like, why do, people, why do so many people like this guy? I don't find him intriguing at all. It was, well, he never dealt with a text, really. And, um, and then he was Arminian, right? Yeah, he was Armenian, and he was very he was very ecumenical. I, I actually I'm kind of astonished that he did have such um, approval with so many in our circles, Joel, because there there were uh, quite honestly there were it's not that there were no red flags there were red flags with him it, for the person uh, who who cared to look. Uh, he was Armenian. Uh, he was very ecumenical. You know, he um, a number of years ago. He made some news and caused some waves when he went to the um, to a Mormon temple hmm. and made some really ecumenical kind of comments to Mormons and hmm. raised some eyebrows and it, it, it rightly so. I mean, it should have raised a lot more eyebrows than what it did. And um, and here's another thing: um, little, if any, church involvement. I didn't know that. Little, if any, church involvement. Well, there's your problem. Always on the on the road. Always on the road. Well, again, Justin Peters raises some of the same points that Drs. MacArthur and Chow raise. He talks uh, about his moral failings. He talks about the fact that he didn't have accountability in a local church, that he was traveling all the time. And I didn't play all of the clip, but if you go on further, uh, Justin Peters talks about the fact that he has decided that he will not travel more than one Sunday in three, so that he's got at least two Sundays where he's in a local church, hearing the Word of God taught, and he's accountable to other people, which I think is terrific. I think it's a a great point. But one of the things I like about what Dr. Peters said in the clip we played is that he goes beyond his behavior and begins to talk about some of his beliefs. He talks, for example, about the fact that he's an Arminian. Dr. Ravi Zacharias uh, was an Arminian. Well, that means, among other things, that Dr. Zacharias believed that he could lose his salvation. And in order to keep it, he had to persevere in good works until death. That is not believing the promise of John 3.16. That's not whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. That's whoever behaves in him will not perish but has everlasting life. So I appreciate uh, Justin Peters bringing up the fact that he was Arminian. However, most Calvinists, which Justin Peters is, think that Arminians can still be born again because they do believe that Jesus is God and he died and rose again as long as they are faithful in their behavior. And so they focus, according to the perseverance of the saints, on behavior more than beliefs. Now, I'm glad that he brought up the beliefs, but I think the reason that Justin Peters brought up the beliefs was to say that made him question the man, and now looking at his works tend to confirm that, yeah, he's not born again. Now, Dr. Peters also talks about the fact that he is he was ecumenical, going so far as to say that on at least one occasion, Dr. Zacharias spoke in a Mormon church and implied that Mormons were born again, that Mormons were fellow believers on the way to heaven. Uh, That is certainly troubling, and that is certainly a doctrinal uh, failing. However, both the behavior of Dr. Zacharias and his beliefs at the time 
uh, of his death does not tell me what he believed his whole life. He might have believed earlier in his life that simply by faith in Jesus, he was secure forever. Apart from works, apart from perseverance in faith or perseverance in works. And if he ever believed that, then he's with the Lord right now. You see, the Lord and his apostles, when they were considering the issue of eternal life and of salvation, they looked at the root. They didn't look at the fruit. So as a result, they're not going to question someone's salvation because of the lack of good works in their life or the presence of bad works in their life. They're going to question someone's salvation if the person does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for that salvation. Look at John 3.16. Whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. Acts 16.31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Ephesians 2.8-9. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's the the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Or Revelation 22, 17, let whoever wishes take the water of life freely or as a gift or without cost. Everlasting life is a free gift to all who believe in him for it. Did Dr. Ravi Zacharias believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for everlasting life at some point in his life? I don't know. But if he did, he's with the Lord now. And if he did, he's with the Lord now, even if he had major sin problems at the end of his life. Because Jesus took care of the sin problem at Calvary. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The issue is we're dead and we need life. And when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, He gives us everlasting life and we'll never perish, we'll never hunger, we'll never thirst, we'll never die, we'll never be cast out. That's truly good news. If you like what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus. I love you guys. Oh,